So, hello, I'm Maddie Harland and I am in Cornwall with Aranya and Delvin from Canada. So it's an amazing opportunity to ask them about permaculture. So we've been talking about Permaculture magazine and how it was founded in 1992 and how it was very land-based in the beginning. And then we had this wonderful flowering of understanding about human relationship and the vital aspect of people care. But I feel like now we're coming into another phase of permaculture and the future is beckoning for an evolutionary process to occur so that it becomes even more relevant to climate chaos and, and disruption in, in society as at large. So tell us, I, I don't know who wants to go first, but how do you see permaculture evolving from where we are now to into the future? Well, I could jump in on that maybe. Yeah. Permaculture is really a creative practice. It's started very science-based, which it still is. And as it's evolved, it's become also more of an art as well. Mm. So it's been a fusion of art and science, which is really what the future is. We're integrating a lot of the creative practices and arts that give us passion and allow us to express ourselves in unique ways with the science of how things work and how nature was designed. And I see that permaculture is moving beyond simply the science of growing things, which it always will be, and into encouraging people to take it into how they communicate and have relationships and how they express themselves creatively. So it's really exciting to feel that the the permanent culture of permaculture is able to permeate all facets of human society and civilization and ultimately I think part of our goal is to create a culture of caring and achieve peace through permaculture. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so yeah I mean the word that immediately came into my mind which you said several times there was creative that um, there's this idea of the original permaculture design, the designer's manual was the permaculture bible and I've always felt that permaculture has evolved, it continues to evolve, it's a living thing, it's come from living things and we, we evolve and so does the ideas that we have and how we do things and I, I love to see the creativity of people and I think what permaculture brings is it, it gives us tools to move forward into the future in a way that I can't, I feel that I can't even begin to perceive what's possible, mm. you know, and as one of the older generation now, the elders, this is kind of a weird thing, weird place to be, but just, um, and maybe some things that I'll never see, you know, that's beyond my lifetime, but I'm very excited for how we can move forward, because I think at one point Bill did say, you know, it's not that we don't know how to do things, it's just that we haven't had the will to, or, you know, the people care aspect of things, how important that is, community and how we live together and learning that when we do things well we don't have to fight over resources because there's plenty for everybody and so but yeah I'm very excited about what might happen in the next number of decades. I hope I live to be a hundred and to see all of that so uh, yeah we'll see, we'll see. Um, mm. And I think anything that creates resilient stable systems and not just ecosystems but human systems is just incredibly important so a lot of the work I've been doing has been about establishing and enhancing biodiversity because we've got such a huge species mm. lost so I see the future of permaculture being very much about community and people and resilience and creating that abundance that we know is possible. But I also see it as being 
um, about designing, using all those wonderful design skills to design habitats that actually support you know, wild species that we're not actually going to harvest. We're going to create abundance in zone five. And, and that's going to become really vital as we have collapsing bird and insect populations and problems with extinction. That, that there's going to be such a call to use our skills to create more rewilded landscapes. Uh, and so I see that as hand in hand with what you're talking about has become vital and that's like making peace with the natural world and we need yeah. to do that as much as we need to make peace with each other. Yeah. And I think if we can become better educated as systems thinkers, yes. as a phrase, Absolutely. and we start to really understand how important that is, yeah. not just for the natural world out there, but for all of us. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And also, you know, scientific processes and data collection and understanding what works but actually proving it with with you know proper data collection and comparisons and spreadsheets and all those things which are fascinating and once you start to add year on year to the information you're collecting so yeah i see that as being really important as well that's brilliant. Well, permaculture has always been visionary and really emerged out of the creative fermentation of the 1960s and 1970s. And yeah. Bill Mollison described permaculturalists as time scouts. So we're all leading the way collectively into the future. So I'm really excited about what comes next. And Toby Hemming would call it the next adjacent possible. And I guess it's a mystery, but we'll co-create it together. Exactly. And we really don't know what it's going to be. And that's great because we're not limiting it with our imagination. We're just letting it be what emerges. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, you two.